Well, welcome everyone. Okay, everyone, uh, here we are in week nine. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, absorption costing versus variable costing. So uh, sit back, put your seatbelt on, and enjoy the ride. Uh, but my job today, what we're going to do is walk through uh, a set of slides and then work a comprehensive example in Excel, and then that question that we're going to work in Excel will be very similar uh, to the questions that we will be uh, working in class. So if you can get your head around that question, uh, you'll be in good shape. Probably, I'm estimating somewhere around about 40 to 50 minutes uh, for the recording. So let's launch in and uh, see what we can discover. So we'll start with the slides, absorption versus variable costing. I'm just going to check that the, uh, the the microphone is on. Yes, we're we're good to roll there, which is nice. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, absorption versus variable costing. Uh, that that word absorption, if you think of the, the the root word of absorption, it's to absorb, and, and that gives us a hint as to what's going on here. It's really under absorption costing, sometimes called full costing. Uh, we are, are absorbing all of the costs of production, both variable and fixed cost of production. Uh, under variable costing, we're just looking at the variable costs. So we'll look more at those, what's involved in those in a moment. Uh, we're going to see uh, the two different styles of income statement uh, between absorption costing and variable costing. Definitely two different styles of reporting. And we're also going to uh, have a look at uh, calculating some variances, the spending variance and also a volume variance or capacity variance. We need to be able to do that to be able to complete our uh, absorption costing and variable costing questions. It, um, let's launch in. Here's part one, which will also include, funnily enough, part two. Um, so under absorption costing, we said a moment ago that it's going to include all of the fixed and variable costs of manufacturing are going to be including. And when we talk about a product cost, it means really it's going to be charged to the work in process value, if you like, the work in process stock account, which of course then gets transferred to finished goods as well. So we're able to carry forward both fixed and variable costs as part of our stock. That's why it's called a product cost. It's attached to the product until the time it's sold, in which case it then gets charged against cost or to cost of goods sold. Uh, under variable costing, sometimes called direct costing, only the variable manufacturing costs are attached to the value of stock. So we've mentioned a moment ago that this fixed manufacturing overhead cost is going to be charged to work in process and finished uh, goods stock. It will be an asset, essentially. Variable costing, however, is going to write it off as a period cost, not to charge it to the stock, but write it off in the period, in the financial period. Um, so... Uh, it's the actual fixed costs that are going to be written off, not the budgeted fixed costs. So as we incur the cost, write it off. So none of that cost is going to be carried forward into future costs if there is stock contained at the end of the period. So the only costs that are going to be charged to the product or the inventory, if you like, is direct materials, direct labour and variable factory overhead. So we're going to see a slight difference in profit and uh, we're going to have to work out, uh, do a thing called a reconciliation to work out if we've got it correct. So we've prepared the reports. Let's have a look at it. This flow chart is just showing us again uh, what we just talked about a moment ago, that under absorption costing, basically all the costs are absorbed. Direct material, direct labour, variable manufacturing overhead and fixed manufacturing overhead, all being debited, charged to work in process stock, and then as it completed, uh, transferred out to finished goods stock. And finally, as goods are sold, 
jabbed into the cost of goods sold. So uh, absorption costing using uh, when we say normal costing there, we will be applying fixed and variable overheads uh, based on budgeted production. So what does the report look like under absorption costing? It's very similar to what you would have uh, been used to seeing in any of your other accounting studies, just the standard revenue statement. Sales revenue made up of quantity, units sold, times the selling price, less cost of goods sold, again, number of units sold or volume times the cost per unit of our stock. That'll get us down to our gross profit. Uh, take off any other selling and admin expenses, whether fixed or variable, and that will get us to our net operating income. So we're going to be using absorption costing for external reporting to the shareholders. Uh, we'll be applying it according to our accounting standards. Uh, absorption costing is what we need to use. Uh, variable costing will only be used internally for management and also for tax purposes. For reporting our taxable uh, profit, we'll be using absorption costing. Again, this diagram is just again emphasizing the fact that under variable costing, direct materials, direct labour, they're, they're the only costs, the variable costs, the only costs being charged to work in process stock, then finished goods and cost of goods sold. The fixed manufacturing overhead cost written off or debited uh, as an expense or charged as an expense on the income statement. What does the report look like under variable costing? So same sales, quantity times selling price, same sales as absorption costing, now less the variable cost of uh, goods sold. So only direct material, direct labour and variable overhead is going to be included in that. And then we go looking for any other variable costs. So sales minus my variable cost gets me to my contribution margin. Then we'll be deducting all of our fixed costs, whether they're fixed manufacturing overhead or fixed operating and selling and admin expenses. Uh, they will be going in to get down to our net profit. So primarily variable costing used for internal planning decision making. You'll see that in fact it looks, in terms of the style, it lends itself to a whole lot of this contribution margin. You saw that term come up when we were doing cost volume profit analysis and we were looking at the break even point. We need, so sales minus variable costs is my contribution margin. Essentially what we can do is say, well, look, when do we break even? How many units do I need to sell to break even? By getting my fixed costs and dividing by my contribution margin per unit, that'll get me my sales quantity. So that's the, the benefit of variable costing. It enables us just to plan uh, you know, uh, volume, break even and profit. Collections, a whole lot of what if scenarios. So, again, this diagram just reinforcing, making sure that we're aware that absorption costings have got all of these costs are in, whereas variable costing, only the variable costs are included as cost of goods manufactured. Fixed costs written off as a period. Another diagram, just in case, this is the third or fourth time, but just so you get your head around it, so you, you, it's all clear, absorption costing, all of these costs included as a product cost, and as a period cost, we're writing off uh, our variable and fixed uh, selling expenses at the end. Uh, under variable costing, the only stock or product costs are the variable ones. Our fixed manufacturing overhead plus these are treated as a written off in the period in which they are incurred. Well, let's have a look at an example. In this particular example, not too much data to worry about, 25,000 units produced. Uh, here's our direct materials, direct labour and variable manufacturing overhead, all variable costs there, $10, plus some other variable costs per unit of three. We have some fixed costs, manufacturing overhead, factory manufacturing overhead costs there at 150. 
Well, let's assume they're keeping it nice and simple. They're assuming that that's budgeted as well as actual costs, so no variances just yet. And we've got some fixed selling and admin expenses. So when we come to calculate our cost of, uh, per unit, uh, again, so both absorption costing and variable costing are going to have these three elements, the variable costs in at $10 per unit, but only the absorption costing will pick up the fixed manufacturing overhead based on budgeted figures. We have the fixed overhead dollar budget divided by the budgeted units, $6 per unit. We have a higher cost uh, per unit, and therefore if we do have any closing stock, we'll be carrying forward some of the fixed costs from this period into the next period. So this time we uh, think about what we're producing 25,000 units and we're selling 20. So we've got 5,000 units on hand at the end of the period. There's no beginning stock. So uh, opening stock, add production of 25, minus sales of 20, gives me 5,000 units on hand at the end. Uh, so we're going to have a different profit between the two styles of income statement. So let's have a look under absorption, so a quantity sold times selling price gives me my uh, revenue, less cost of goods sold, 20,000 units, and this is the full cost, fixed and variable costs in here, $16 per unit, gives me the cost of goods sold there, 320. Sales minus cost of goods sold gives me my gross profit. Then go looking for any other operating expenses, both selling and admin, either variable or fixed. Whatever the question says, find the data, plug it in, and we've now got a net operating uh, profit of 120,000. Let's compare this um, with our, uh, have we done the variable? I'm just checking, no, we haven't. Let's go and have a look at the variable. So under variable, same revenue. Same volume, 20,000 at the same selling price, 30, so sales is the same, $600,000. Less our variable costs of goods sold. This time, not $16, but just the variable cost, the $10, direct material, direct labor, and variable overhead at uh, quantity sold, 20,000 units. There's my variable cost of goods sold, $200,000. Go looking through the question for any other variable costs. There were some selling expenses at $3 per unit, 20,000 units sold, so 60,000 is my variable selling expenses. Total variable expenses, 260, minus my sales, gives me my contribution margin. Then go looking for my fixed costs. Fixed manufacturing overhead, actual expenses, write them off in the period, $150,000. And go looking for any other fixed selling and admin operating expenses, $100,000. So we've now got a profit of $90,000. Let's compare that $90,000, try and work out why it differs from the $120,000 under absorption. And it's all got to do with this 5,000 units in closing stock that we're able to carry forward a higher value into next year's uh, financial period. So uh, we're going to do a reconciliation similar to this uh, in a few minutes time when we come to do a detailed question but essentially let's find the difference between the two statements $30,000 and let's see if we can analyze it and sure enough it is, uh, we produced 25,000, we sold 20,000, so we have 5,000 units on hand, multiplied by the fixed cost per unit, $6, gives me, and I'd be happy with that, I'd, whoops, go back a slide here. We've now been able to reconcile the difference between the profit, so there we've been able to explain it away, it's got to do with the different valuations that we've got on our closing stock, and the fact that all of the fixed overheads have been written off under variable costing. Haven't been able to carry $30,000 forward into next period as we were able to do with absorption costing.
So what we can see happening then is if uh, we actually produce exactly the same number of units that as we sell, uh, the, the two profits should be the same. Uh, what we can see happening, in fact, that very vari under variable costing, profit is just a factor of sales and sales only. Here under absorption costing, yes, uh, it, the profit will go up as sales go up, but we can manipulate profit a little bit by producing more. Not, it's not necessarily just a factor of increasing sales. As we produce more, we can actually carry forward more of the fixed costs into next period and therefore uh, manipulate the profit. So uh, we just got to be careful that managers who are paid a bonus based on uh, absorption profit don't, you know, uh, go crazy and produce heaps thinking that they'll get a bigger bonus. Uh, of course, the next year things will turn around. We'll talk about that uh, as we see that in a minute or two. So what this slide is telling us is that when the number of goods uh, produced equals the number of units sold, uh, profit will be the same under absorption as well as variable costing. Second dot point is telling us that if we produce more than we sell, uh, absorption profit will be more than variable costing. And if we produce less than the number of units that we sell, uh, the variable costing or absorption costing will be less than variable costing. And vice versa, variable costing will be greater than absorption costing. So this uh, di these couple of slides are then just illustrating that again. If units manufactured equals units sold, both profits will be the same. If units manufactured is greater than the number of units sold, absorption costing profit will be more than variable costing profit. And if units manufactured are less than units sold, absorption costing profit will be less than variable costing profit. We'll have a look at another example that uh, demonstrates this. This is the raw data, not too much data to worry about. Units sold and the selling price and the variable uh, cost per unit and also we've got some budget fixed costs here. So same sort of deal, uh, come up with the cost per unit under both systems, variable and absorption costing, we'll have the same, but under absorption costing, obtain the fixed manufacturing overhead budget, divide by the fixed uh, budget in units, and we will have a fixed overhead cost per unit. So it's high, it's carrying a higher value, and let's see what happens as the stock levels change. Here, uh, both sales happens to equal exactly the same quantity that we produce. So same sort of report, sales, less cost of goods sold, gets me down to the gross profit, take off any uh, fixed or variable selling expenses, gets me a net profit under absorption costing of $100,000. Let's have a look at variable costing. Sell exactly the same amount as we produce. Yes, we've got a lower cost of, uh, uh, of cost per unit, but we're going to write off the fixed manufacturing costs down here. So all we end up with is sales less all of my variable costs, including selling and admin costs, gets me to my contribution margin, and then uh, take off my fixed manufacturing overhead costs as well as any other fixed selling and operating expenses, and I get exactly the same profit as we did under absorption. The same profit. What happens if we produced more than we sold? Well, we, we, we expect absorption costing profit to be more. Let's check it out. 12,000 units sold at the selling price gives me the revenue. Uh, 15,000 goods produced, less, as we only sold 12, we've got 3,000 in closing stock carried forward to the next period at 35, 105,000 carried forward. And um, of that, $10 is carrying forward the fixed cost, $30,000 if you like. 
that, that equals my cost of goods sold. Sales minus cost of goods sold gives me my gross profit, less selling uh, variable costs and fixed costs gives me my income from operations, $70,000. Let's compare it with absorption. Same revenue, 12,000 units at $50. Where's my revenue? 600,000. Less my variable costs of production, 25. So 15,000 units at 25. I've still got closing stock here of 3,000 at 25. So the variable cost of goods sold, 300,000. 600,000 revenue minus variable cost of goods sold gives me my gross contribution margin. Take off any other variable expenses to get down to my net contribution margin, 240,000. And then take off my fixed manufacturing overhead costs, fixed selling and admin costs. I've got an income here under a variable costing of $40,000. There is a difference of 30,000. Let's see if we can reconcile it. And it's all to do with the fact that we've got a closing stock of 3,000 units multiplied by the fixed factory overhead cost per unit. And we've got, we've been able to reconcile the $30,000. So we're happy that both revenue statements have been um, calculated correctly. Beautiful. So this thing here, and what that previous slide, is very similar to the reconciliation that we'll be doing in about 15 minutes, the full question. Uh, find the difference between the two incomes and try and explain it in terms of stock movements, either opening or closing stock. Uh, this time around, we're bringing forward some opening stock from the previous period, and we have no closing stock. Sales, number of units times selling price per unit, uh, and then beginning stock, uh, 5,000 at 35. Cost of goods manufactured uh, gives me my cost of goods sold. Sales minus cost of goods sold gives me my gross profit. And then find any other selling and admin, variable and fixed costs gets me down to my net profit under absorption costing of $50,000. Let's have a look at the variable costing statement under this. In these circumstances, same revenue uh, and cost out, variable cost here, direct material, direct labor, variable overheads, gives me my gross manufacturing or gross contribution margin minus any other variable cost gives me my net contribution margin. Take off fixed manufacturing costs and fixed selling costs. I've got a, a profit now of $100,000. Just compare it again with $50,000 different. Can we explain it using the stock levels? Let's have a look. So this time there was a 5,000 unit uh, in opening stock, no closing stock, at the fixed overhead cost of $10. So we'd be happy that both of those reports must be correct. We've been able to reconcile the difference between the two income statements. There are some YouTube clips that will uh, you, that are, may, you might find helpful uh, if you'd like to chase those up. They're just going to give you some more examples on and, and a better understanding of what's going on in these two methods. Uh, what are we going to use these? Uh, both of the reports are helpful uh, in terms of um, planning, budgeting. Uh, analyzing where we're going, but particularly, I, I believe the variable costing pretty helpful in terms of you know looking at contribution margins and covering fixed costs and break-even analysis. That's the whole reason we really want to keep the fixed costs out of the scenario and have it in that that sort of break-even style or cost volume profit relationship uh, style of report. Well, now we're moving into just to ha have a look at the variances. The variances pretty much any time that our actual costs are different than our applied costs. And applied costs are calculated by uh, grabbing the or obtaining the actual activity and multiplying by a budgeted uh, cost per unit. So we're really comparing actual costs with budgeted costs. 
and therefore we're getting a variance. And it's going to be favourable if ever our actual costs are less than what we've applied or charged to work in process. And it's going to be unfavourable whenever actual costs are more than our applied costs. So if, of course, if it's favourable, we'll need to reduce the cost of goods sold. We haven't charged enough. Uh, if it's unfav unfavourable, I'm oh, sorry, I said that incorrectly. Uh, if it's a favourable variance, uh, what that means is actual costs are less. We've charged too much to cost of goods sold, so we'll have to reduce it. If it's unfavourable, it means actual costs are greater. We haven't charged enough to the cost of goods sold, so we'll need to increase, add to our cost of goods sold. Uh, just a quick recap. When we were back doing um, uh, job costing, we were doing the journal entries, and what we discovered back in that topic was we had uh, manufacturing overhead, actual costs being debited to the factory overhead control account. And then we were applying debiting work in process based on actual activity times the budgeted application rate. And here what we can see happening is that actual costs are more than our applied overhead costs. We haven't charged enough. When you look at where it ends up, it gets into here to work in process and then as stock is completed and leaves the work in process account, it's debited, so credit out of work in process, debit into finished goods, and finally as stock is sold, leaves the finished goods warehouse, we are debiting cost of goods sold and crediting finished goods. So we really haven't actual costs with this much. We actually haven't charged enough. So to fix it, we'll need to uh, debit cost of goods sold and credit the factory overhead control account or factory overhead applied account if we chose to use it. So um, let's have a look what, about what could go on. But with, with absorption costing, because we are um, applying both fixed and variable, uh, we're going to have a spending variance and we're also going to have a volume variance with the fixed overheads or a capacity variance. So uh, we need to include both fixed and variable costs overheads in our calculations for absorption costing variances. That's basically telling us exactly what I've just told you. So how are we going to do that? The full variance under absorption costing, basically we're going to get the actual production and multiply by the predetermined manufacturing, total predetermined manufacturing overhead cost, which is going to include fixed and variable overhead in that rate. And we're going to take it away from total factory overhead incurred, both fixed and variable. How's the report? What's the report going to look like? Sales, less cost of goods sold, and then again, if we had a favourable variance, we would really need to reduce the cost of goods sold. If we had an unfavourable variance, if we've underapplied our overheads, we'll need to charge more to cost of goods sold, so we'd have to add the unfavourable variance or the underapplied overhead to get the true cost of goods sold. Sales minus the real cost of goods sold will give me the gross profit and then take off any other selling and admin costs, fixed and variable, to get down to our net profit. But with the variable costing, we only need to worry about the spending variance on variable costs. So let's, let's just, dug, if this will make more sense as we actually start to apply data to it, but just, just again, uh, what we'll do is we'll compare the actual variable overhead expenditure to what have we debited, what have we charged to work in process based on actual production times the variable overhead rate only. Again, what is the report going to look like? Sales, less variable cost of goods sold. And then if it's an unfavorable variable spending variance, we'll have to increase the cost of goods sold, favorable, reduce it, get down to our real gross contribution margin. 
then take off any other selling expenses to get to our net contribution margin, and then finally, all of our fixed costs, including manufacturing overhead, as well as any other fixed selling and admin costs, will come into play to get down to our net profit. So what are the steps? Well, we need to examine our just the units. Don't worry about dollars. We're looking at units produced and to try and work out what our opening and closing stock is. That's step one. We're going to use that to try and reconcile the profits at the end. Step two, calculate a cost per unit for both absorption costing and uh, variable costing. Then step three, calculate any uh, overhead variances, under or over applied variances. And finally, once we've done that, we're ready then to prepare the statements, produce the, the, the statements, and, and then the last step, do the reconciliation. If it balances, we can be confident that our reports are correct. So here is a typical sort of question that you'll get in your tutorial. There's really only so many ways they can present the data to us. What we're seeing is this data here is all actual results, actual production, actual sales in units, selling price per unit. And these are the actual costs, both are variable and fixed manufacturing overheads. All this is actual. Down the bottom here, we've got some budgeted figures. And uh, so we're going to be using these figures to calculate the overhead application rates. And finally, we're told what the opening stock in units was, 8,400. Just even before we dig into the question, we can see that we, we budgeted we'd produce 40,000. We actually produced more. Whenever we produce more than budget, uh, we will have a favourable volume variance for our fixed overheads. Uh, so we've been able to write off our fixed overheads over more units. Here, had we known, we would have been dividing the, our budgeted dollars by not 40,000, but 44,000, if we thought we were going to produce 44,000. Um, we do need to adjust our variable overheads. Variable overheads, we're expecting to spend that much when we produce this much. Of course, if we produce more, we're allowed to adjust the variable overhead budget to compare it with the real expenditure to see, in fact, is this a favourable or unfavourable spending variant. So more, more of that in the, the next couple of slides. That'll make sense, I trust, uh, for us. But just looking at fixed factory overheads alone, we can see that we actually spent 165. We were hoping to only spend 160. So we do have an unfavourable fixed factory uh, overhead spending variance we spent more than we had budgeted. Um, we talked about this briefly before that a production manager may seek to manipulate profit by going crazy on production, producing more than they could really potentially sell. And that's an issue because we've just got increased our warehousing costs, uh, risk of obsolete stock, and what's the point of producing if we don't have uh, sale? We don't have customers to buy the product. So profit goes up and potentially his bonus does as well. Only in the short term, of course. You've got to keep producing more and more and more to keep your, your closing stock more than your opening stock. Um, so what could happen is that maybe a manufacturer could choose to produce products that absor are absorbing the highest amount of fixed cost. Uh, irrespective of the demand for other units. So they, they could, um, yeah, there's a couple of little tricks here that they, they, they could be involved in. And, uh, and maybe even accept orders to increase production when perhaps another uh, division of the organisation could be better suited to manage the order and defer maintenance, perhaps. So... Um, so, look, what are some of the ways we could you know, stop that occurring? One is to, to, to really only give the, the production manager a bonus based on the profit calculated under variable costing. That would take away any incentive to go crazy on production. Uh, 
So that, that's one method. There's a couple of other methods they use. And certainly in the long period, over a five year period, it should all sort of work out in the end. So maybe his bonus has, has taken on the average of the last few years, perhaps. Okay, um, so that look, there is this is this slide is just reminding us that there is a difference. The contribution margin is just revenue less or variable costs, whereas gross margin is sales minus cost of goods sold. There's some fi a fixed cost component there. Um, the Australian accounting standards are suggesting that product costs uh, include so absorption costing essentially is uh, part of our costing for inventory. All right, well, let's, uh, all we've got to do now, it probably takes about another five minutes to walk through a, um, an Excel question. That, that was Wally's question that you saw a moment ago. Uh, let's see if we can walk through that together. So uh, here is the data that we've got, the actual data, uh, very typical of the questions we'll be doing in the tutorial, and some budgeted, oh, sorry, some budgeted data down, and also the opening stock for the period. Okay, step one was to look at what's going on with our stock levels. So pick up opening stock in units, 8,400 plus, Production in units, 44,000, gives me 52,400. Minus sales in units, 48,000, means my closing stock's 4,400. And I'm going to use those stock levels to, uh, we're going to use them to reconcile the two profits in a few minutes' time. Next step is to work out the cost per unit under both absorption and variable. So for the for direct material and, and direct labour, we actually will be looking at actual costs. So we'll get the 396 divided by actual production of 44,000 will give me nine dollars. We'll plug in there, and also that same cost here will come in uh, to play uh, for our variable costing. And I might write the formula here. We'll say let this equal the direct material, total direct material cost divided by uh, total production, actual production, $9. Do the same for labour. Uh, we will get labour costs in total divided by the production, so 220 divided by 44 gives me $5, goes in under absorption and variable. For my overheads, however, I'm going to be using budget figures. So get my variable overhead budgeted cost divided by my budgeted production level. Gives me $2.50, which goes in under both variable and absorption. Finally, fixed overheads only go in under absorption costing. Dollars fixed overhead budget divided by fixed overhead unit budgeted units, and I get four dollars. That adds now to twenty dollars fifty. You can see it's 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 a higher cost than under variable costing. So if there is any stock in closing stock, uh, absorption costing profit will be more. What we can see just looking up here is in fact stock levels are decreasing over the period. So it looks like absorption profit is going to be less than the variable costing profit. Let's crunch the numbers and see if we're right. But before we do, we've got to work out what if there are any overhead variances. So we're going to pick up for absorption costing. We need to pick up both the um, actual fixed costs at B13 as well as the variable costs, overhead costs at B13. And pick up those two and we know we actually spent that much. Now let's work out what we've charged to work in process. What have we debited? It's going to be, the formula for that will be actual production at 44,000 B4 times in brackets both variable overheads and fixed overheads. These two figures here, $2.50 and $4.00. So 44,000 times 
$6.50 and give me that figure there, $2.86. Well, we can see that I've actually charged too much. Actual costs were only two seventy, dollars So I've got $15,400 over applied my overheads. I've got a favorable variance. I'm going to need to reduce my cost of goods sold by $15,400. Let's have a look at the variable uh, overhead variance. This time, just looking at actual variable overheads, it's sitting up here in B10. And then I compare that with, well, what would we have debited, or what do we charge, what have we applied? And the answer is actual production at B4, 44,000, it's up there, 44,000, times just the variable overhead rate of $2.50. Sitting over here in H16. And that gives me $110,000. So uh, again, I've charged too much. Actual costs were only $105, uh, whereas applied overheads are $110. So $4,400 uh, over applied or favorable spending variance there. So I'm going to need to, again, reduce my cost of goods sold when I come to do my variable. Uh, variable uh, uh, costing statement. This reconciliation will come up at the end, but let's plug in the data, see what we can come up with. Let's have a look at the absorption, the income statement, and the absorption costing. Sales, let's get the quantity sold in units, multiplied by the selling price of $30 to get my revenue. Notice revenue under variable costing, exactly the same. Quantity, unit sold times selling price. Now we're getting the cost of goods sold. Uh, we're using $20.50 here for absorption, whereas when we come down to do a variable, it's only the $16.50 for variable costing. So I'll stay with absorption costing for a little bit longer. So we, we cost that out, $48,000 at $20.50 is that. And we've just got to check, yes, we, we calculated that we had uh, over applied our overheads. We need to reduce the cost of goods sold by 15400 So take off 15400 That gets me the real cost of goods sold, the correct cost of goods sold. Sales minus cost of goods sold. There's the real gross profit. Take off any expenses, both variable and fixed operating and selling and admin costs straight from the data that you're given in the question. Plug the data in and add it up. And we now can get gross profit minus those operating expenses gives me a net operating income of 135. We did predict that it was going to be less than variable costing and it is, but let's keep going and see if we can prove that that's correct. So same revenue. Uh, again, cost of goods sold at the sixteen fifty. We got down to there, and then we said yes, but I've still got a favourable spending variance here, four thousand four hundred. Sorry, uh, four thousand four hundred. So reduce that cost of goods sold less four thousand four hundred to get the real cost of goods sold. Sales minus the variable cost of goods sold gives me the gross contribution margin. Go looking for any other actual variable costs. There they are there, 156. That's my contribution margin. Take off, writing off fixed factory overhead as a period cost, actual fixed factory overheads written off there so we don't have to worry about volume variances or spending variances because we're charging the actual fixed factory overhead cost there. Less uh, other selling expenses and we've got our net profit. Last thing to do is the reconciliation. Uh, I like this particular style of reconciliation. Uh, the textbook will po probably give you this method. Doesn't really matter, both work, and there is no right or wrong way to do it. So let's start with the, well, I think this is an easier type of rec, uh, and then we'll do this one. All we've got to do really is take the difference between the two profits, 151 under a variable minus 135 under absorption costing gives me a $16,000 difference. And then we've just got to 
find the difference in fixed overhead costs in opening stock versus fixed overhead costs in closing stock. So we just go and pick up the stock figures. Opening stock was 8,400, closing stock was 4,400, and fixed overheads are $4 per unit. So plug that data in, 8,400 at 4, 33,600, 4,400 at, or that should say $4, not $400, is 17,600. Find the difference. Ah, fantastic. 16,000 matches that 16,000. We can then be pretty happy that all of our calculations here and here, including the variances, are correct. The other style of reconciliation was um, just starting with one of the profits at the top, absorption profit at the top, say, and variable profit at the bottom. And then the trick, what the reason it's a little bit harder is you've got to work out, oh gee, this is smaller than this. I need to add that whatever the larger figure is, and which is it going to be? It'll be the, the one that has the most units in stock. So, oh, okay. We go up and say, hmm, yeah, righto, uh, opening stocks more than closing stocks. So let's let's add opening stock. We'll work out what the fixed costs in opening stock uh, are, 8400 at $4, cue that in, uh, and then fixed overhead costs in closing stock, 4400 at $4, and finally, if we've done it all right, it should match up with 151 But my preference is this method here. You can choose whichever method you like. Well, look, that's uh, all I really, we all really need to do at this point. We will be doing questions very similar to this one when we get back into uh, class. So look forward to uh, catching up with you and working through some more questions.